countries around the world are recalibrating that balance in the direction of much more intensive uh, action on, on climate change in light of both the dangers we have been talking about, but also the huge opportunity that has been created by the uh, dramatic reduction in cost of the clean energy path. And all of, and that is exactly why the United States has been able to pledge 50 to 52% by 2030, far more than, as I said, we would have dreamed possible just a few years ago. And this brings me back to China, because while China has pledged carbon neutrality in uh, mid, mid century, it is, which is great, um, it has not so far uh, planned to announce plans to do enough in the 2020s, in my judgment is that we now have the technologies available to achieve net zero emissions far faster and cheaper than we dared hope 10 years ago. And a lot of the work of the Energy Transitions Commission, which I chair, and which is a global coalition with members in China, in India, in Australia, in America, in Europe. Todd argued that the climate change science should change our point of view of what we need to achieve. But the technological progress, which is being driven as much as anybody by China, should make us confident that we can go faster. China,在这个方面呢，我们也是做了很多努力。所以大家讲，你们能能不能做的更好一些呢？这个转型创新，这个实现碳达峰、碳中和，它不是一一蹴而成的。它是要有一个过程我相信发达国家工业化二百多年你们这些问题呢也在你们工业化的过程当中逐步地得到解决一些问题说我们现在这个从从这个达峰到碳中和需要三十年美国是需要这个四十五年欧盟是需要六十七十